Splatoon 3 already had a lot of different weapons, but with the two new seasons released, as well as many different balance patches, the order for what might be the best and worst in all of them has changed a lot since my first video, so I wanted to update it. Once again, this is from the perspective of a top-level player competing in tournaments, and can apply loosely to the higher ranks of solo queue. This ranking is, of course, just my opinion, and regardless of how good or bad your weapon is, you should just play whatever you enjoy. Also, since we have a lot more shooters than last time, short range and spray shooters will be one category together, and semi-automatics and long range shooters will be another, so we will be ranking 12 classes up from 11. With that all out of the way, subscribe if you enjoy, and let's get started. So, unless you've been living under a rock for the past, like, five months, you know what the best short range shooter in the game is. It's the splash matic For those who haven't kept up with the discussion, though, this is a lightweight mobile shooter with perfect jump accuracy, great paint, good kill time, good object damage, and its only weakness is slightly less range than other short range shooters. It has burst bomb, though, which can help make up for that weakness in addition to paint, chip damage, and just being able to poke at a longer range. But the thing that really makes this amazing is Crab Tank. This is currently the best special in the game, with 500 HP, range to match chargers, a one-shot combo, ability to hit around corners, high damage per second, and a long 8 second duration. This has been the best for a while. Yes, the Crab Rider is a little bit vulnerable, but with the lack of flanks on many of the maps, as well as ball form and a lack of end lag allowing you to circumnavigate that weakness anyway, it's honestly not a big deal. And since Splash is 200p, even if a crab does go wrong, you can very easily get another one. Yes, after three patches trying to deal with this thing, they did not once try to increase the points for special even a little bit. And considering this thing has been dominating the meta for three different patches and over five months, it would be unfair not to rank it at the top of its category. For the worst short range shooter, it easily comes down between the sploosh matic and the arrow spray. Both of these have gone better since my previous video, with Stamp getting a lot of bug fixes, as well as Reef Slider getting buffs and arrow spray going from 200 to 180p. Sploosh would normally be the one people would expect to be the winner here, as in Splatoon 2, with a different kit of Splat Bomb and Ultra Stamp, it had a niche in Rainmaker due to its high mobility and object damage, and it maintains most of that ability in this game. Even with Curling Bomb being a weaker mobility tool for a weapon that doesn't really need it, it in theory should be able to do both of the things it did in the previous game. However, it's just outclassed this time around because of Splatana Wiper. This weapon also has insane damage per second of mobility with an Ultra Stamp, but with a far better sub-weapon, and the main weapon is arguably the best main in the entire game. Something I'll talk about more when we get to Splatanas. And well, since this potential niche was the only thing giving Sploosh a chance against Aerospray, it means this is now the worst weapon of the short-range shooters. For long-range shooters, it seems like the Squeezer would be an easy win, since it's one of the best main weapons in the game as well, with high accuracy, a fast kill time, insane range, and a paint mode. Plus, it just got a Zooka buff against Crab. However, this update introduced the 96 Gal Deco, which has a rather threatening two-shot. Even if the main weapon can struggle with some shot accuracy and having a bit more limited mobility compared to the class, the splash wall provided to it allows it to be a solid turret that can paint very well. So as long as it has a special it can play around, it can definitely be the best in this class. And well, you can't really mess with Splatoon 1 meta. Kraken is insane. Even before this came out, people knew it was going to be good. I mean, this was one of the most defining things of Splatoon 1, and it's literally a kit of a weapon that used to be meta at that time. While Kraken may not be as powerful as it is in that game, you are still invincible for over 7 seconds with no way to end the special early, and with a new charge mode, you could be basically immune to knockback, preventing Kraken taming. This special's interactions with the objective are insane. You can absolutely just tank a GG Booyah Bomb and be fine, force a pop and points on the Rainmaker, or give free power clam jumps in clam blitz. Even outside of the objective though, you have to deal with the special for 7 seconds, and if you're hoping any of your own specials can save you, I got bad news. This thing melts through HP, absolutely demolishes slow stuff, and there is nothing you can do to keep it away from you. Even stuff like Inkjet can be reached with the Kraken's larger size. So considering the insane special strengths, as well as the main weapon's kit being able to compensate for its weaknesses, it's easily a top tier and the best of this class. If that weapon wasn't enough to showcase the importance of kit synergy, let's talk about the weapon that has some of the worst kit synergy in the game, the Vanilla H3. There was absolutely no competition. This is easily the worst. It's a main weapon that already struggles more since mobility has become more important in this game, but its kit does nothing for it. Sensor can locate enemies, but doesn't really help when you need a strict one-shot kill in a lot of situations, and Tactic Cooler just doesn't work. Yes, H3 can be aggressive in previous games, but that's because it had a special that made up for its slow speed by giving it protection, like the Bubbler or Ink Armor. Tactic Cooler more plays into weapons' mobility more than anything, which doesn't really help H3 that much. I have no idea how this didn't get something like Big Bubbler that would have just been a perfect fit for it. Unfortunately, one of the weaker main weapons in the game, with a 
a kit that's not only weak balance-wise right now, since neither of the sub and special are that great, and having no synergy with the main weapon lands this easily at the bottom. For the rollers, we have a competition between our previous best, the Flingza Roller, and the Carbon Roller Deco. Flingza's niche of missile spamming to help get its team in and painting at a safe distance has definitely gone worse since the first video, being a 210 points for special weapon and a built-in 10 second cooldown when trying to launch them, but it still maintains that niche of being the best missile weapon. However, we really only see it in zones, and I think there is a different weapon of rollers that can see a bit more use overall, even with its only a few dedicated players, which is the Carbon Roller Deco. This is a very fast roller that is a little bit weak, but it has the perfect tool to compensate for that, the Burst Bonds, giving you distance poking and ridiculous combos that greatly extend your kill range. On top of that, it has the recently buffed Trizuka, which helps deal with one of the main things Carbon has struggled with lately, fighting crab tanks. Now that the special is much better damage against it, it becomes a much more viable alternative. Carbon also has some maps it can't be used in, but it has much more niches than Flingza Roller, so I would rank it slightly higher and the best of its class. For the worst roller, everyone's probably expecting the big swig roller, and yeah, its damage is pathetic and its kit is very mediocre, but honestly it has some strengths. In the recent patch, they made it one of the best weapons at damaging objects in the game, which is far from a useless quality to have in a meta full of HP specials like Crab Tank. On top of that, it has the best paint in the game, having insane burst paints, painting range, ink efficiency, and total paint output, which can make it really difficult to deal with and give it a solid niche in zones overall. Still close to the worst, but honestly, the vanilla carbon just sees way less use. The only reason to pick this thing over the carbon roller deco is Zipcaster, and while it is 180, the paint of the main weapon and lackluster paint of the sub combined means you barely ever get this. And while Zipcaster is solid and carbon is the best weapon to try to kill quickly with it due to its one-shot capabilities, it's not that strong to where that's actually something worth it, and we've seen pretty much none of this weapon. Even something as weak as Swig at least has its use cases compared to this. Chargers are one that could seem pretty even between the E-Leader and Zekofin, as both see its fair share of uses, but honestly, Zekofin sees use in just a little bit more map modes. Long-range Chargers are obviously amazing in this game. The map design enables them a lot, and it's very difficult to avoid their sight lines, and Zekofin's kit is just a little bit better, with Splash Wall allowing you to position more aggressively or potentially challenge longer range threats, and Tri Strike being a great option against HP specials or to help your team get in, and the vulnerability of it is very mitigated by the amount of distance you can put between yourself and your team. While E-Leader might have a bit better pressure at a distance and be a bit better against certain more aggressive comms due to the Wave Breaker, Zekofin sees overall just a little bit more use. Now, if this was a main weapons only competition, Gootuber would easily be the worst of the Chargers, as its charge hold gimmick isn't really as useful with the sacrifice of so many other stats. That being said, it's got Torpedo Antenna Missiles, a kit that gives it some limited usage rate, to the point where even me, someone who's never played the weapon, used it at the big house a while back to get top 4. On the other hand, the Snipe Rider is only a slightly better main weapon, aka it's still not great, and its kit is just awful. I get what they were going for, Sprinkler to help build a special, and a special that can help get you in and improve your strafing speed, which is very useful for this weapon while firing, but it's nothing that it actually needs, and the power of that sub and special is pretty weak. And when the main weapon you're falling back on has problems like paint, ink efficiency, and some of the worst object damage in the game? No, seriously, this thing is a 9 shot to break crab. With Object Shredder. Without it, you need 11 shots. That's 3 charges. That is ridiculous. Good luck breaking that thing before the natural decay runs out, and if your weapon struggles versus crab, it is not a good sign in this meta. Now, in my last video, I had a lot of faith in Vanilla Slosher, to the point where I actually ranked it over Machine, and at the time, it kind of made sense when some comps were able to beat Machine, but ever since Splash has come into the meta, yeah, I'm sorry, Slosher, you're just definitely not better than this. Machine is one of the best, if not the best weapons at both working with Splash, Burst Bomb, and Crab Tank, and fighting all of those things. It's another combo damage weapon that has nice distance pressure, covers AoE, and is very reliable at hitting the Crab user. It's pretty much like the inverse of Snipe Rider. The logic I mentioned before of if you're bad against Crab, your weapon probably sucks right now also applies in reverse. If your weapon's really good at dealing with Crab, it's probably in a great spot, and Machine definitely fits that with an overall strong kit that works great with and against the meta. For the worst slosher, we have our first repeat placement of this list, being the Blob. Honestly, mostly everything I said in the previous video applies, but for a quick TLDR, the weapon shots travel incredibly slowly, and with the enhanced mobility of this game, it really struggles to be able to hit and wall out spaces effectively, as well as having a kit so similar to Explosher that can do the same role better. It does have some traits that are more useful, such as the lingering shots and damage per second, but none of those are enough to really make it see drastic use, and on top of that, the sub-weapon for it just isn't great. Blob is kind of locked in this more 
supportive playstyle that doesn't let the weapon have the flexibility it needs to succeed right now. For the best spotling, we have the Heavy, probably the weapon I underrated the most in my previous ranking. We've really seen a lot of this weapon due to its ability to shut down comps that don't have any long range things to deal with it, particularly with the combo of Heavy and Wavebreaker. With the output this weapon has, as well as Wavebreaker being so useful against aggressive weapons like Blasters or Duelies, and even in general helping out against things that have to walk into it, it's been an incredible combo to keep control of areas you want. That, on top of its overall solid stats, mean that it seems a lot of use lately. And while it's falling off a little bit due to some new long range options like the custom Jet Squelcher and the Zekofin Charger, it's still in the best spot out of all the spotlings. I will say the Nautilus definitely has a close second though, as being able to fire for a little bit longer, some nice stats, and a kit that works way better for it than people think made it a close competition. The worst of the spotlings is still the vanilla mini spotling. The good news is though, for many players, they have the Zinc mini kit, which while not a perfect kit, is an amazing supportive niche and definitely the best bubbler weapon in the game right now. I said last time that the main problem with the vanilla kit was the Ultra Stamp, and while it's gotten some bug fixes, the special is still in such a mediocre spot right now. On top of that, the same kit is now on the L3 that it works slightly better on, and Hammer in general is starting to have more uses as an object shredder and better for weapons that can risk dying more. So it works great on a wiper that's going to be aggressive anyway and not get too much of that special as well as specialize as an object damage, and not really as much for mini that's trying to also paint and support its team. Hopefully in a few seasons before I make the next version of this, Ultra Stamp will finally get some real impactful buffs. Up next are the Blasters, a class that, while doing better than Splatoon 2, is definitely still struggling overall right now due to a lot of weaknesses. These things can include stuff like damage against HP specials, mobility since jumping has high inaccuracy, ink efficiency, pain, etc. While none of the Blasters get rid of these weaknesses entirely, the one that minimalizes them the most while having new strengths to play around is the Rapid Deco. Rapid has always been the Blaster that's thrived more than the others since Splatoon 2 started. Its mobility is a bit better, it has solid ink efficiency, the poking capability and area of effect it has is much more useful, and it has a nice safe range to poke at. On top of that, the new Rapid Deco has Torpedo, which if rolled off of a wall or floor can combo with the main weapon, giving you a fast kill option or a way to do more reliable damage and poke other mid-range weapons more reliably. The special weapon of Inkjet, while not amazing right now, is still solid versus crab, which is quite useful, and it fits the weapon's playstyle well to try to push the aggressive potential, allowing you to have a way to continue to push forward in ways the normal weapon can't. On top of that, its ability to one-shot can still be useful up close as a last-ditch effort to stay alive. The weapon's definitely not in a top-tier spot right now, but easily the best of all the blasters. For the worst blasters, it's between the Clash Neo and Luna Neo. Luna is a pretty mediocre main weapon that struggled because Try and Octobrush are just really harsh competition. And while Fizzy Bomb is an amazing all-rounder sub for it, the special of Ultra Stamp is not only quite weak right now, but it doesn't even really do anything special for Luna. However, I'd still give it to the Clash. Yes, it has that annoying blast radius, but its kill time is still awful, its damage per second is terrible, paint is worse, and honestly, the sub of Curling Bomb is just horrible for it right now. Don't get me wrong, if the sub was buffed to have a lot more utility, it'd be great, but think about it. It is the same ink cost as something like a Splat Bomb that is only useful for a mobility tool and a very small amount of paint output. And when you're putting that on a weapon with some of the worst paint in the entire game, and whose only notable part of the kit is the Super Chump special weapon, if you can't get that special, why would you even pick this? Even if you wanted to play Clash, the vanilla kit actually has a poking bomb and has a really good special with Trizuka that works for it just fine. And if you really want the super chump, you can play Zap, which is a weapon that can actually play for it. It's just completely outdone in both the main and special weapon potential uses with a weak sub balance wise. The best of the brushes is the vanilla ink brush. I talked about last time how it has amazing kit synergy, and as we've developed with the game, it's become even more clear that's a major strength of this weapon. While it doesn't have the ability to stay behind opponents like the Inkbrush Nouveau Splatoon 2 with its baller, the ability to get in reliably with Killer Whale and play off of that since you can roll while you're targeting people, as well as the spot bomb being a great all-rounder, is amazing. The main weapon is a little bit weak damage-wise, but the speed, paint output, and just ability to force itself anywhere on the map, especially in maps that are difficult to move on, are honestly huge strengths of the weapon. Which is why it's funny that the Inkbrush Nouveau is the worst brush. I mean, to be fair, it's only comp competition is the Octobrush, which has a pretty solid Zipcaster niche if you're looking to be able to kill with the special. The Nouveau's kit is just kind of meh. Mines are nice if you can actually get behind people and can lead to that annoying factor, but Ultra Stamp doesn't protect you anywhere near enough to allow you to stall as much as a baller did in Splatoon 2. And well, if the special can't really help you get behind people as much, what's the point in investing in a sub that's only useful in those situations as well? You might as well just play the vanilla kit that can get behind people decently anyway 
and farm a better special. Duelies definitely have a lot of competition. The regular one is a solid option if you like crab tank for more aggressive weapons. The squelcher has insane slides, but honestly, the tetra is the best one right now. Yes, the kit on this thing is not great. Auto bomb's fine, but reef slider is complete garbage. However, that honestly doesn't even matter for this weapon. Tetra is played to run a bunch of quick respawn, hold forward on the sides of the map, and either pull people away or get multiple kills for its team to get in. And considering its ability to both shoot while it's rolling and have four separate dodge rolls, it's really good at that. This strategy of play has gone much more popular in Splatoon 3 with the map design we've seen, and despite crabs and splashes being tough competition for it, we've still seen Tetra quite frequently at high levels of play. Last time we ranked the Duelies, the worst was the Vanilla Dapple Duelies, mostly due to its kit, and we hoped it would get a better kit. The good news is that the Vanilla Dapple Duelie is no longer the worst Duelie. It's the new kit it got, because it's pretty much the same as the Tetra kit, except instead of being attached to Tetra, one of the better main weapons in the game that can play that aggressively and fire while it's rolling, it's on a weapon that actually struggles to get in and kind of needs a special that is in complete garbage. It does at least have the torpedo and some good damage per second, so it could be okay on Rainmaker, I guess, but even then, you'd probably just rather have a Tetra. I really hope this thing just gets the most insane third kit imaginable, because it's been waiting so long for one. Up next is the only weapon class where none of the rankings have changed, which is the Brellas. I'm gonna cover both of these together. The best weapon of them is the Tenabrella, and the worst one is the Undercover Brella, and the logic for it is pretty much the exact same. We have not gotten a single other new Brella kit, nor have we gotten any Brella buffs for this class that's been consistently the worst ever since the game came out, which honestly sucks. I can't even say anything different than I said last time, so literally just see the last video, and Brellas are in the exact same spot as it was before. That's just sad. The Shringers, while not getting any new kits or weapons either, have changed a bit. Reflux had its missile spamming capabilities toned down with nerfs and points for special increases, and Tri Stringer got better paint, a slightly cheaper special, and a bit easier special power stacking with that special. And well, the dynamic has shifted for sure. Tri Stringer is easily the better one now. This weapon's starting to be able to play to a lot of the strengths it wasn't able to last time. It paints enough to where it can kind of be in the middle of Charger and other backlines, even if it doesn't have the same painting capability as Explo. And the chip damage capabilities have been much enhanced by the output of Killer Whale being much higher. And honestly, on top of that, we've just seen Tri Stringer players do more with the weapon. Its object damage has proven to be more valuable with a lot of crabs in the meta, including winning the Area Cup World Championship even before some of the Killer Whale and points for special buffs. As for the Reflux, it's kind of had the opposite effect. This thing was only good at missile spamming, and without the output of missile spam, it's really difficult to justify picking the weapon, because paired with the curling bomb and extremely low range, it just doesn't do a lot. Yes, it does have that one shot with a pretty fast charge time, but the margin of error for that is so small that it's proven to be a little bit too unreliable. Its extreme strength of missile output gone really hurts the weapon, especially since it was also falling off due to its lack of painting range, meaning people realize the later into a game you get, the harder it is for the reflux to spam missile without putting itself in danger and getting picked off. Honestly, right now, if people want missiles, they just pick the Flingza. So I hope this weapon can end up getting some buffs to maybe push it away from just being a special spammer. Finally, is the Splatanas. Both of these weapons have improved drastically since object damage has proven to be more important and people have been pushing the weapons. On top of that, Wiper got a bit of buffs in terms of the hammer throw being a lot better and even the rush mode dealing more object damage, as well as the main weapon getting a paint buff that drastically helps its mobility. Stamper, though, has proven to have an insanely high skill ceiling with a lot of room to work toward, and on top of that, the Zipcaster buff with its ink efficiency drastically helped the weapon to get more value out of the special, even more so that it's fighting stuff like crabs that it can fight much more effectively than players with the mobility to deal with its low kill time. For me, though, especially considering how strong the main weapon is, I'm gonna give it to the Splatana Wiper. This thing just has unparalleled mobility, it's amazing in terms of its object damage, it's super threatening and difficult to fight, and its charge slash mode has ridiculous range. It's got a one-shot up close, and Torpedo with it is just amazing, able to function as a pseudo-burst bomb to reduce kill time or give opponents something to shoot at. Ultra Stamp really is the only thing holding this kit back, and this is by far the best weapon to be paired with it. This is something that's going to be going in aggressively a lot, so it doesn't rely on its special as much like a Tetra, but unlike that weapon, the special is still much more helpful here because it has a throw mode that's actually useful, especially now that it can one-shot crab. And even the rush mode can be used to stall and stay alive if you're using a wall to help protect you. It has a very interesting hybrid between the Stamper and Tetra playstyles, and I think it fits that really well, especially as more options like 96 get added to the game that aren't as hard countered by Stamper, I think Wiper will rise to the occasion. That being said, let's 
not count out my favorite weapon. Stamper is still absolutely ridiculous in its own right. People have gotten a lot better at using the Zipcaster, and it's one of the best ways to actually be able to kill a crab user, not just break the special. But if you want to try to break it, the weapon has amazing range that can more reliably hit crab with its low strength speed. It also has insane mid-range pressure due to the burst bombs being able to speed up its kill time significantly and the charge slash horizontal combo being absolutely devastating. And since it still has access to a quick one-shot and a dash, it's more than able to function up close. It's another great option at dealing with the crab meta we have so far and also has more tools to work with Splash since it also plays around the same combo and chip damage potential. So stuff like the burst bombs and paint helps it out a lot. And that's my list. It was fun to make this again with the updates and I'll probably tackle it again in another six months. A lot more change than I thought it did, though at the same time, there's definitely some stuff that's long overdue for changing. But I think some kits to some weapon classes that aren't shooters are going to help out with that quite a bit. So I'll see you all next time.